Welcome to part 22. In the last video, we have our login form popping up correctly within the color box, but clicking on the login button doesn't actually do anything yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start work um, first with a tiny fix. So if you go to the login.php file, which is within the app folder, um, you'll notice that I have two lines here setting error messages to appear if either the username or the password field is not filled in. And if you remember from the last video or two, I talked about simplifying the way error messages show up. So rather than displaying a full error message next to each input, we're simply going to add a red border on that element to indicate that it's missing. So one quick thing I need to change is rather than saying required field for this error underscore user and error underscore pass, I'm just going to use required. And you'll see this change in a couple minutes once we actually get the form working. Now to briefly go back to my test page, um, the next step is going to be working to make sure that this login functionality actually works. So I'm going to open up the underscore login.php, um, which is available within the app folder core and views, and I'm going to add a jQuery block up top here. So that looks like this, and what I want to do is I want to use jQuery to catch the form submit process, and we're going to use the submit function for that. So let me show you that it looks like this, and we're going to make sure the form has an ID. So I'm going to add that in here. I'm going to call it login, and up here within the jQuery. I'm going to call the login ID and call the submit function. Um, here we go. Like that. And um, this in itself doesn't do anything yet, but when the form gets submitted, it's going to catch the submit process and run whatever jQuery code or JavaScript code we have within this function. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to disable the browser's default response of refreshing the color box once we hit submit. And to do that, um, I'm going to use a function called prevent default. And I'm going to add a variable within the function call. I'm just going to call it e. And the first line is going to be e dot prevent default. Looks like that. And uh, this prevents the default action from occurring. Uh, some people will use return false for this, um, but it's generally known that the prevent default function is the best practice solution to preventing the default action. So feel free to check out the jQuery documentation on the prevent default function in case you want to learn a bit more about that. So I'm going to save this and let's take a look at our test page again and see what's going on at the moment. So we click the login button and nothing happens. So at least that's a step in the right direction. Now how do we actually go about processing this form? Well to do that we're going to use a bit of Ajax. And um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to capture the data from the form and pass it along to Ajax. Um, we're going to provide it the URL to the login page that will process the form and um, return the results. So I'm going to set up two variables. I'm going to set up var username. And that's going to equal, I'm using a bit of jQuery here, the value of input an ID of username dot val and I'm going to do the same thing to password and 
and if I look down here it doesn't look like we have username or we have the ID set for either username or password so I'm going to add that in like so and um, just so you can see this working I'm going to add an alert here So we can actually see what uh, values these fields hold. So I'm going to put test in both fields, click login, and you'll notice we get test test. And um, if I just remove one of the fields, we get test in a blank string. So you know this is working properly. And I'm going to combine those two variables into a single variable that we're going to pass into Ajax, which I'm going to call data string. And I'm going to do username equals and a plus username and password equals plus password. So basically what we're doing is we're going to provide this variable, um, we're going to pass it along to our PHP script that processes the form, and that script will return data back to us. And this is how we go about processing the form and actually supplying the form field values to the processing script. The next thing is to actually call Ajax. So we're going to do that like this. Uh, a pound sign or a dollar sign for jQuery dot Ajax and we're gonna pass in a couple um, variables here we need to set some things so first we're gonna set the type which is gonna be post so it can either be get or post but we're gonna use post in this case I want to set the URL which means the URL of the script that processes this form. And we're going to use a little bit of PHP here. And we're going to echo out the site path. And then app slash login.php. Because we basically want this login page or this uh, login PHP page to process the form for us or display the form depending on what's going on. So that's the second line. Um, and then we want to actually pass in our data. So we're going to include the data string variable. We want to make sure that this data is not cached by the browser. So we're going to set cache to false. And we need to provide some sort of um, success function, what occurs when the Ajax completes successfully, what do we do with the data that um, gets returned by the PHP script that processes this form. So we're going to do that like this. We're going to do success and we'll do a function which includes HTML and the HTML is the result of our process script. Let me check that I've done this correctly. Okay, yes, that is correct. Um, so, and then within this success function, I'm going to replace the, some of the content on the page with the content that was returned from the PHP script. And uh, rather than simply typing this out, let me show you how I got this result. So let me open up um, this test. I'm just gonna copy this URL and paste it into Firefox. Here we go. So I'm going to look for the ID of the div that creates this login form. Um, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to do that using Firebug. And it looks like we want CBox loaded content because this actually creates the div. Um, let me delete this element, and you'll notice it disappears. 
So I want the contents that's returned when the form is processed to replace the existing pop-up. So if I go back to my login view, I'm going to use a bit of jQuery here as well. I'm going to pass in a CBox loaded content. And the HTML within that div is going to contain the HTML uh, from the PHP processing script, like this. So let's go ahead and test what we have now. So test, test, and we get a form refresh, but it doesn't seem like we actually have anything appearing here. So let me check and see what's going on. So probably the first thing we need to test is we want to make sure that the Ajax call is working. So within the success message, I'm going to add an alert and I'm going to display the contents of the HTML variable. Um, and as I said earlier, the HTML variable contains the results from the Ajax call, um, the HTML and CSS that's returned by the PHP function. So let's go ahead and test this. And it looks like we are getting data within the HTML variable, so that's good. Um, and it looks like it is the um, HTML from the login view, which is good. But it doesn't look like it is showing any sort of processed message. Um, so for some reason, the login.php, this section is not getting called, and it's defaulting down to this line. So um, probably the key culprit here is going to be this line. And if I remember correctly, this is a line left over from the object-oriented series that I did on a PHP login. And you'll notice, if we check the login view, that we're only passing along username and password. Um, we're not passing along submit. So post submit is never actually set. So I'm going to get around this by, instead of checking for post submit, I'm going to check for username or password because we know those will be set. So if I change this, um, let's go back and test this again and see what's going on. Okay, so it looks like we are getting a fatal error. Um, it looks like we have an issue within our authorization model. Uh, probably a piece of leftover code from the uh, OOP login series. But I'm going to go ahead and take care of that in the next video. Um, we're headed in the right direction because we know that this is now getting processed and it is working correctly.